for uh, holding this hearing and, and to Mr. Grijalva as well. This is really important and timely. I am encouraged by the Committee's keen interest in identifying long-term solutions for our Federal Forest Counties and the hardworking people who live there. I recognize my colleagues from Oregon, Peter DeFazio and Kurt Schrader, for working uh, together with me and others uh, as we work to uh, deal with this problem. We all agree that the status quo serves no one well. Later today, you will hear from Commissioner uh, Doug Robertson, Chairman of the ONC uh, Counties Association, and Tom Tuckman with the Governor's Office. I am very pleased the Committee called on these two individuals, given their combined wealth of knowledge on the issues before us today. It is time for real change. Let me be clear about what our forested communities face, and my colleague and friend from Southern Oregon has talked about this. Since 1990, the timber harvest from Federal forest lands in Oregon has dropped by more than 90 percent. Sixty percent of Oregon's forest lands are owned by the Federal Government, but contribute only 12 percent to the State's total timber harvest. The economic future, uh, picture in Oregon's rural forested communities is just as bad. Of the 14 forested counties I represent, Ten currently face double-digit unemployment. Eight of these counties over the last five years have had an average poverty level of 14 percent or greater. How could we let this happen to our rural forested communities? There appears to be a direct connection between the loss of mills and jobs and the substantial increase in poverty. Harney County in 1989 had three operating mills and a poverty level of 10.6 percent. The county no longer has a single mill. Poverty level is 18.6 percent. 60 percent of the school children in the county qualify for free or reduced lunch, 60 percent. Harney County has seen the effects of one large catastrophic wildfire after another and a total loss of their mill infrastructure. All this while surrounding them are hundreds of thousands of acres of Federal forests in desperate need of treatment, treatments that could provide a community with family wage jobs to people who really need them, and better habitat and less costs as we treat forest fires. This is ridiculous, and I am unwilling to say that we cannot fix it. The Oregon Employment Department understood this connection to the loss of mill infrastructure and impact on the community. In 2007, after mills closed in John Day, Wallowa and Hines, a report was issued which said job losses across these three communities was the equivalent to 26,000 people losing their jobs in the more metropolitan area of Oregon. What would the outcry be if suddenly the Portland area companies like Intel or Nike just simply shut down? Well, just ask people who live in John Day, Willow or Hines. They will tell you it is devastating. I think we can all agree the status quo just doesn't work and won't work going forward. Our communities don't even want the status quo. They don't want the handout that has made them dependent on the Federal Government. They want jobs. They want healthy forests. They are tired of the catastrophic fire and bug infestations. They are sick of the budgeting uncertainty. They want to take care of themselves. The ONC counties sent the Oregon delegation a letter to this effect on March 11. I would like to enter into the record with your permission, Mr. Chairman. Without objection, it will be part of the record. Thank you. Other Oregon County governments are crying out for change, and I would like to enter into the record a letter sent by the Association of Oregon Counties uh, this week. I would also like to now enter into the record a report prepared in December of 2012 for Governor Kitzhaber, which contains some remarkable and telling facts about the current ecological and economic conditions of forest lands and communities. Across southern, central, and eastern Oregon, there are approximately 19.8 million acres of forest land. Approximately 9.2 million is available for active management. Seventy-eight percent of this ground is significantly at risk of crown fire. Seventy-eight percent is ready to go up in smokes with a crown fire, a most devastating type of wildfire. Forest management activities like commercial timber harvest, stewardship contracts, watershed restoration only connected are conducted on 1.4 percent of the entire 9.2 million acres. That is 129,000 acres a year, 1.4 percent. It is all we are treating. Given the paltry amount of activity, it is not surprising that nearly one in five people in the study area live in poverty, the highest rate in Oregon. Not only are the forests unhealthy, so are the rural forested communities, and it does not have to be this way. I highlight all of these points because this is exactly the same story which is playing out across western forests. President Theodore Roosevelt, the father of our great forest system, would be horrified at the condition of our forests and our rural communities. And I assure you he would charge forward with a fix to this problem as we are proposing. It is clear the status quo is not working and we need to get our rural communities working again. Momentum is building for change. 
from county commission chambers to committee rooms of the state legislature to these very halls of Congress. We can do this. We can put people back to work in the woods. We can create prosperous communities and healthy forests. We can provide certainty for teachers and law enforcement officers, and we can better manage these forests. This is our opportunity to make federal forest policy work for Oregon and our county and our country, and I look forward to be part of the effort. And Mr. Chairman, I thank you so very much for scheduling this hearing and the incredible work you are doing on this issue. I thank the